The next miracle, these are ores so far, mm -hmm. is nuclear energy. Not particularly popular right now uh, in Japan and Germany and uh, it had never been that popular. Even France, the France, French public is more negative towards nuclear energy than the U.S. public. So it's Even though they're, what, 70 70% 70 70 of electricity. Uh, we have more nuclear plants than they do. We have a, over 100 nuclear plants of the 400 in the world. So we are the biggest in absolute nuclear electricity generator. But, but, yeah. but you are personally investing in nuclear. Right. So the plants that are out in the world today are basically gen, generation one and two plants. There's a few generation three plants, including uh, at the conference, uh, Westinghouse, Toshiba talked about the AP-1000, which is a Gen 3 plant. That and the Ariva EPR are the two uh, Gen 3 plants. I think you can build a lot of AP-1000s, and I think partly because what the Chinese are doing, that has by far the inside track. A lot of those can get built so that, you know, Chinese have this goal of 80 gigawatts. Assuming there's no more accidents, that, that actually can be done. Unfortunately, because they're... Uh, demand increases so great, it only gets you up to, at, at most, say, 12%, best case of Chinese energy. The thing I'm investing in, uh, and not because I expect to make a ton of money on it, uh, it's because it, I think, because it's zero CO2, because the economics are so good, uh, is a fourth generation design. And there are many fourth generation designs. This one is very, very attractive from an economic point of view. I mean, way cheaper than uh, today's nuclear can you, we, we had Nathan Mervold here last year, but can you explain a little bit about how this uh, technology works? Okay, basically... And this, you, you're just among friends here. Yeah, absolutely. To... Uh, <laughs> the part of uranium that's fissile, that is that you, when you hit it with a neutron, it splits in two, uh, is about 0.7%. And when you break a uranium atom in two, you get a million times as much energy as you do from burning a, a carbon molecule. So you think, wow, this is good technology. It's a million times better. Now, you have to take that factor of a million advantage and say, oh, crumb, that stuff that it splits into, that's radioactive. That's <laughs> cesium, some bad stuff. Uh, some short half-lives, that means it's intensely radioactive. Some long half-lives, that means that it, 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 it's around for a long time. So basically, the reactors we have today are burning that 0.7%. And that works fairly well. There was a concept a long time ago that you would do a different type of reactor called a fast reactor that would make a bunch of another element called plutonium. And then you would pull that out, and then you would burn that. That's called breeding in a fast reactor. That is bad, because as soon plutonium's nuclear weapons material, it's messy. This, the processing you have to get through is... is not only environmentally difficult, it's extremely expensive. The concept of this so-called TerraPower reactor is that you, in the same reactor, you both burn and breed. And so instead of making plutonium and then Taking extracting it. it, we take uranium, the part that you, the 99.3% that you normally don't do anything with, we convert that and we burn it. So it's like a candle. A candle, wax doesn't burn it room temperature. It's the flame converts it to be a liquid, and that burns. So this is just like a candle. Our flame is taking the normal depleted uranium, the 99.3% that's cheap as heck, and there's a pile of it sitting in Paducah, Kentucky, that's enough to power the United States for hundreds and hundreds of years. You're taking that, and you're converting it to plutonium, and then you're burning that, uh, and we have super high power densities. We have, you know, total fail-safe. Fail Any reactor that a human has to do something, that's a little scary. What's the scale? Is scale important here, or is it the same scale? Our, the TerraPower reactor, the current design, uh, is about the same scale. That is, a, typically, it's somewhere around a gigawatt-type design. Because of the surface-to-volume ratio things, the first design we're doing doesn't scale down very well. Now, we have another design that works for the smaller type, the more like 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt design. But our first design, which on paper really works well. Uh, <laughs> and one thing to point out is that 
Digital simulation, and this applies to all these energy technologies, the ability to digitally simulate things is night and day different than in the past. So when they built, say, the reactor at Fukushima, their ability to simulate things was very limited. They wouldn't really know. We take our reactor. We, you know, we have magnitude 10 earthquakes. We have volcanoes flow over. We have <laughs> tidal waves passing by. And we look and we say, oh, OK, let's put some more concrete in. Uh, you can understand what's going to happen digitally in a way that you never could before. And so the idea of full passive safety, Gen 3 takes us to much, much, much better passive safety, not full passive safety. Gen 4, whoever's Gen 4 gets built, will be a no human required, you know, no zirconium turning into hydrogen to explode type design. Timetable for t uh, TerraPower? Okay, this is really fast. It's not, you're going to be amazed. Uh, by 2022, if everything goes perfectly, our demo reactor will be in place. And by <laughs> 2028, again, assuming everything continues to go perfectly, it will be a design that could be replicated and built in many, many, many uh, places. You could build hunt at that point because you have no fuel constraint, and according to me, you have extremely good economics, good safety, no proliferation, no waste. Uh, then it, you could you could go if, you could go nuts if everything goes perfectly. Absolutely. How often does everything go perfectly in nuclear? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> if you ignore. No, no, come on. If you ignore 1979 and 1986 and 2011, come on, we've had a good century. Uh, okay. No, seriously, I mean, in terms of raw figures, you know, coal mining, natural gas, more people die. I mean, it wasn't far from here, a natural gas you know, pipe blew up and incinerated people. And so, you know, it's... It, it's important to keep in perspective that nuclear energy, in terms of a overall safety record, is better than okay. other other energy. Okay, so we